If we truly are free, then our property is truly our own, and we can exclude anyone from it, even the government. That's not radical. That was the idea of most of the founders when they were breaking away from the king. And if you read what Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence, those were his ideas as well. This is the so-called takings clause in the Fifth Amendment. It enshrines your right to private property without undue government interference. Traditionally, takings for public uses included highways, schools, and other government-owned and operated projects. Eminent domain is an absolute necessity for a country, for our country. Without it, you wouldn't have roads, you wouldn't have hospitals, you wouldn't have anything, you wouldn't have schools. But in 2005, the Supreme Court turned that notion of public use on its ear. My name is Suzette Kilo, and the government stole my home. Back in 2005, you'll remember Suzette Kilo went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court after the city of New London, Connecticut, used eminent domain to seize her home and transfer the property to a private developer. She and other homeowners lost their homes when the court ruled the private use by a developer would serve a public purpose. Economic development. Uh, the payment of higher taxes or the creation of more jobs is now a public use under the Fifth Amendment to the uh, to the U.S. Constitution, a very dangerous uh, precedent that the, uh, that the court set. We know from the Kelo case that this has truly been uh, distorted now. The Fifth Amendment at least has in its protection public use that's now become public benefit. And Kilo says that a public benefit can be more tax dollars in the tax collector's coffers. Put another way, more tax revenue is a sufficient reason for governments to seize private property. In the Kilo case, as in many cases of eminent domain for economic development, the projected benefits never materialized. To this day, nothing has been built. Only feral cats have really been using the property regularly. The reason this case became what it is today it isn't because the Supreme Court said five to four, you can do this. It's because how the general public across the United States reacted to that decision. The important point is that the law has always differentiated between public and private entities. Public entities like roads or police stations and public utility companies, those things aren't run for private profit, and so they're allowed to use eminent domain. The difference between eminent domain for public purpose, as Donald said, roads and infrastructure, pipelines, and all that, that's for public purpose. But what Donald Trump did was use them in a domain to try to take the property of an elderly woman on the strip in Atlantic City. Trump offered to pay for Vera's house, but she said no. So he got together with some New Jersey politicians. And those politicians declared Vera's house blighted. One of the fundamental building blocks of capitalism is private property. And to say that the government can take private property from a small property owner and give it to a big corporation like Trump or one of his casinos, I think it's antithetical to freedom. It's antithetical to what we stand for. An eminent domain is a good thing, not a bad thing. And what a lot of people don't know, because they were all saying, oh, you're going to take their property. When somebody, when eminent domain is used on somebody's property, that person gets a fortune. They get at least fair market value, and if they're smart, they'll get two or three times the value of their property. They ruled that Trump could use eminent domain to take her property if he paid her a quarter of a million dollars. But I don't think that was a fair price. Vera had turned down a million dollars for her house. Now she was being forced to sell to Trump for a fourth that. Do you want anybody in government valuing, your, valuing a mortgage you hold for the, how much you should be paid? I'm an investor. I own dozens of properties here in Austin. Eminent domain should terrify all of us. A powerful, politically influential person using his power to steal, essentially, somebody else's private property for his own private profit. That is not public purpose. That is downright wrong. Hey, here's the problem with that. Right, okay. The problem was it was to tear Jeff, down. It was to Jeff tear wants down. To be, he wants to be a to tough guy. Down, he wants to be a tough guy it tonight. Was to tear down I didn't the take house, the property. And the net I, result I didn't, was you tried. I didn't and take you the lost property. In the, court. the woman ultimately didn't want to do that. I that walked is away. not true. In one 1954 case, homeowners in the District of Columbia saw their homes destroyed and the land given to private developers to build a shopping center and office buildings. In 2005, another property in Connecticut was taken over and sold for $1 a year to private developers in an attempt to increase city revenue. The whole purpose of 
eminent domain, of, of the protections against eminent domain in our Constitution. In fact, the very purpose of a Constitution at all is to protect people who don't have political influence and can't persuade politicians to do their bidding. I'm Captain Weaver. This is Dixon, our scout. We're looking for fresh horses. Ours are putting their war out, chasing Red Cloud. That's a nice looking animal you got right there. Well, thank you. I like him myself. I'll take him and uh, any others you got. Well, he's not for sale. I ain't asking. I'm telling you. I'm requisitioning that horse uh, for the government. I'm telling you. He's not for sale. You defy the U.S. Army. That's treason. You cowboys can be hung for treason. <laughs>